<clears throat> our teacher, the Baal Shem Tov, said, everything you see, everything you hear, is an instruction for serving God. Huh? Every wind, every flower, every this. This is the idea of avoda. This is idea of avoda. Avoda means serving God. The word avoda also means to change. Ibud oros, to change yourself. Namely, to change the way you think, to comprehend and discern in everything a message, a way to serve God better. If no other reason, to be more appreciative, to be more open, to be more positive. Uh, I mean, I'll just say, you know, I learned, I said, as I told you before, I learned a lot of the teachings of Professor Viktor Frankl, a blessed memory. And he says that there's three ways to find meaning in the world. One way is to appreciate things, love, value, see the good in other things, appreciation. Another way is to create something, do something, change something, <clears throat> improve the world around us, say a good word, do a good deed. <clears throat> and the third way is, is when there's a time, especially of suffering, and we can't appreciate it, and we can't find anything good there, and we can't change it, inescapable suffering as we can change our attitude. And that's the real deepest way to find meaning. But the point, what he's trying to say is, and that's why the Lubavitcher Rebbe very much encouraged him to continue his teachings. He had a lot of enemies, a lot of enemies. <clears throat> and he encourages because the main thing is the world, that we learn from the world. We appreciate the world. We change the world. We change ourselves because of the world. Uh, the world, our interaction with the world reveals meaning. The meaning is there. We just have to discover it. But you can't discover it unless there's an interaction with the world. And that's what the Baal Shem Tov says. But the Baal Shem Tov, the, 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 and Victor Frankl is talking about just humans, human beings. We're not talking about God or religion or anything. It's, a, it's an ingrained nature of human beings, just like people breathe and people eat. People want meaning. They need meaning. And the meaning is there. And that's the, basically the message of the Baal Shem Tov. But the Baal Shem Tov, he says that it's, the meaning is not as subjective as, as uh, uh, Viktor Frankl wants to say that it is. There's also an overall objective, absolute meaning, and that's the Torah. But that does not in any way absolve us from our individual. A person can learn the whole Torah and he can everything and still have a terrible personality. He can live the whole Torah and, and be depressed and not find any meaning in life. And so to a big degree, that's what the Baal Shem Tov is saying. You should learn not just from the Torah. You have to learn to improve your personality, to improve your appreciation of the world around you, not to be so egotistical. Where do you learn it from? From the world itself. From the world itself, you learn to appreciate, you learn to change, you learn to change yourself, change the world. That Baal Shem Tov said that we can do it, though, according to God's standards. Viktor Frankl has a very good point because God's standards also reflect themselves in conscience. Every human being knows deep inside, and the Rebbe says that since the Torah was given especially, but even from the time of Adam, from the time of Noah, Noah was basically the first man. I mean, everybody was destroyed except for Noah. From the time of Noah, everybody knows, feels in their soul that these seven things, seven commandments of Noah, are, are mandatory. That it's bad to kill, that licentiousness is bad, right? The Rebbe said homosexuals, they know that they're doing something wrong. They know it. Even if it's acceptable and they keep telling themselves that it's good and that there's nothing wrong with it and the society is, you know, it's it's the, the whatever's conservatives, but they know deep inside that this is not right. And the Rebbe gives all sorts of different logical reasons why. We're not talking about reward and punishment at all. We're talking about what's right and wrong. People know they can feel. But how much more so when you know that these laws and your conscience corresponds to the Torah? Because without that, you can easily be derailed your conscience. Then we see that, that 
in Nazi Germany and communist Russia, people feel felt guilty if they didn't kill somebody, they didn't turn in their parents or who knows what. So your conscience can also be, how do you say, um, <clears throat> uh, twisted. And if the Torah is there, then the Torah helps. But it certainly does not, uh, how do you say, an ironclad. There were people who were geniuses in Torah. They knew the whole Torah and everything. And they were the worst of the worst, murderers and rapists and everything. We had Menashe, King Menashe, and, and, and he said he killed who knows how many people he killed. And God even forgave him afterwards. <laughs> he robbed him Ben Nevat. So we see that the Torah is certainly not a, what do they call it? A panacea. Is that a panacea? It's not a certainty. It leaves a lot of room for free will. But if you're interested in learning messages and how to learn, use your free will in the most positive and truthful way, as everything in the world sends us a message, everything we see and everything we hear. Have a good day with Mashiach. Now, thank you very much for coming. God bless you. Bless you. You, you read the wrong yom yom. You read the wrong yom yom. What? One. Yeah, look at the screen. Look at the screen. Yes, well, that's what popped up over here. One second. One minute. I don't know. Yeah. Click on today. Maybe something else will appear. Just one minute. One minute. One minute. One minute. I hear what you're saying. One second. Let's see. Let's see what's going on over here. I mean, if it popped up, it must have a point. Let me see. I'm, I'm looking at my cellular phone. Why would they do this to us? One second. <clears throat> here we have the yom yom for today. I just realized it now. Uh, yep, yep, you're right. You're right. I don't know why. Wow, look at this. It says, in the coming of the Mashiach, this is today's Yom Yom. It says, in the coming of the Mashiach, that will reveal the highness of simple simplicity and wholesomeness that there is in the service of simple people that they pray and they say to heal him, Psalms, with simplicity. How did this happen? We'll figure this out afterwards. We've had problems today, and we've solved the previous problems, and we'll solve this one also. Have a good day with Mashiach now. Thank you very much for coming.